Ladies and gentlemen, Biden has cue cards. We have a solution. Please welcome award-winning journalist Sarah Carter from the great state of Texas, Congressman Brian Babin, and your moderator, co-host CPAC Now, Mercedes Schlapp. So we got to talk about them. We thought this would be a good therapy session because God only knows we've been, what, two years into this Biden administration. And I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted. Right? I mean, seriously. Absolutely. I mean, how, how painful ha has it been so far with uh, Joe Biden and his very interesting and somewhat absent vice president and the cabinet members, which I don't think anybody really knows who they are, because they're, right. they're, they're even scared of coming out. But I am so great to be joined with this incredible panel. One of my dear friends, you see her on Fox News all the time, Sarah Carter. Hey. Thank you. And Congressman Brian Babin from the great state of Texas. Thank you for having That's us here. You bet. Great all right, to be well, here with you. Let's get, let's jump right in. What There's do you a think? Lot. I know. I don't even know where. There's, let's jump right in. There's so yeah, much. Yeah. Let's to let's talk. <laughs> let's let's problem. Let's let's try to solve these problems. But first, what is the biggest problem you've seen so far with Joe Biden with the Joe Biden administration? <laughs> I don't even know where to start. But the <laughs> fact that they're so completely disconnected from the American people and our principles, I would say that the biggest problem is that Joe Biden's administration puts America last. Yeah. Right? And not first in every category, whether that's in education, whether that has to do with our economy, whether that's at the border, whether that's foreign policy. Um, and I, I fear that, you know, for a while people became very complacent, right? And especially in this administration, what we're seeing now is that because of the actions of this administration, the American people are actually waking up, they're paying attention. They're becoming more emboldened and involved in politics, and I think that is going to be the solution here, getting rid of the Biden administration and putting people in that know how to do the job. Absolutely. So, Congressman, let me ask you, you go up to Washington, and I mean, you've been there for quite some time. What, what has changed in Washington since Joe Biden's been in power? <laughs> well, I, I'm like Sarah, and great to be with you, Mercy. Uh, it, it's hard to rank the failures of this president. Um, but I think probably the worst, most serious thing that we have seen, and me being from the state of Texas, uh, and also being the uh, co-chairman of the House Border Security Caucus, is our open, porous border. Right. And every single level and every aspect of it is so dangerous to the United States of America, to our people, to our property. Uh, dispensing with great policies that have been developed very, and, and with a lot of negotiation, a lot of hard work under President Trump, and being just going against all the best advice that was uh, coming from the Trump administration. They told the, 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 the incoming uh, Biden uh, administrators, don't get rid of Title 42. Don't get rid of uh, MPP, remain in Mexico. Build the wall all of the various things that they just simply ignored because they hated Donald Trump so much that they just dispensed with. And now we've got literally eight to 9,000 per day coming across. 56 that at the last count that we know of were on the terrorist watch list. Over 200,000 per month coming across this border. And the crime that is washing over this country, Certainly, a lot of that crime has to do with defunding the, the, the police and, and Democrat judges and Democrat districts of attorney that simply won't prosecute and let people out uh, to, to, you know, with, with uh, personal right. recognizance, no bail. Uh, but the, the illegals that are coming across thousands, tens of thousands of the illegals coming across that are convicted, not, not suspected of crimes, but convicted of prior criminal activity in the United States, has served time 
and then been deported and now they're coming back in. There are thousands of those type of people and the American people are paying through the nose in blood and toil and treasure. Uh, and we got to educate all these people. We've well, got to medicate all these that's people. That's right. And I, I got to say, Sarah, you've, I mean, you, first of all, you left the state of Virginia. She was living up near me. She was literally my neighbor. And all of a sudden, I get a call from Sarah. <laughs> She's like, I'm moving to Texas. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, how? So you all gained Sarah. I lost Sarah. I'm really <laughs> sad about that. But I love Texas. <laughs> I'm here anyways all the time. And now she wears like the cute little ball cap and she's got her boots on and she's like all Texas. I'm like, I know. oh my goodness. I've been, well, I've been here for a long time. Ta talk to me. You go to the border constantly. You are talking to our border patrol agents. You are seeing what is ha the chaos that we're seeing on the border. Texans have to suffer this every single day and it's also impacting communities across the country. What is the state of affairs at the border right now? I think it's a global impact. It's not only, of course, first and foremost, a national impact for all of us as Americans because we have to sustain this uh, chaotic and very dangerous open border situation. Uh, you know, I remember people used to say, oh, you know, Biden's policy is failing. I don't think Biden's policy, President Biden's policy is failing. I think it's exactly and I've said this from the beginning, exactly what the Biden administration wants. Yes, ma'am. This is what they want. If you, if you vote for President Biden, this is what you're voting for. And this, and the reason I say, Mercedes, it's a global crisis, because it's also a human, we're, we're the kindest nation on earth. If there is a flood in Pakistan, it's the American people that donate the most money to help the people overseas, people they don't even know, right? I believe that. I believe we're a kind nation. We want immigrants. We believe in it because we're a nation made up of immigrants. Your mother, your family from Cuba, my mother from Cuba, um, our families going back in history. But we're not a nation of chaos. We can't sustain the chaos, not only for ourselves, but for the other human beings that are coming across that border, and I do spend a lot of time there, Mercedes. I, I'm going next week to Central America. I'm gonna spend a week in Central America uh, covering this crisis, which is affecting everyone. But remember, there's a humanitarian crisis at the border as well. And these are children and women and men that are being trafficked by some of the worst people on planet Earth. People that could care less about human life and only want to line their pockets. And not only are we allowing them and perpetuating this criminal behavior, but we are allowing our adversaries like China and other nations like Iran and other adversaries, God only knows who, to take advantage of this chaos at the border. That's why we have now 107,000 in 2021 people die of overdose, fentanyl crisis, is killing our children and killing our men and women. And we have the Chinese moving precursor chemicals into Mexico to have pills made to come into the United States that look just like Oxycontin and Percocet. And only one pill can kill. That's why we're seeing this. We're in an irregular warfare. The Biden administration has allowed it to happen. And unless we, as the American people, put a stop to it, it's gonna get far worse before it gets better. Congressman, let me ask you, I kind of feel like Democrats and progressives are more concerned about what pronouns we use than over like fighting inflation. What about you? <laughs> well, my, my pronouns are he and him. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> my pronoun <laughs> is American. I don't know about you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right? a good one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, you know, the, the border is one of the absolute worst things we've seen. But the day one that Biden took office, he declared war on energy. And being a Texan and representing more petrochemical refining and refinery facilities than any other place, any other district in the entire country, uh, I can tell you that it was devastating to our district there in Southeast Texas. I represent from Houston over to Louisiana. And uh, we absolutely, before Biden took office, I was getting, I was buying gasoline at less than two, $2 a gallon. And now, four, 
five dollars. Depends on what what city or what state you're in. Washington D.C. is seven or eight dollars a gallon. It's unbelievable. California, and the war that he has declared on fossil fuels. And it, let me tell you something. I'm all for wind and solar, but it ain't ready for prime time. It is not ready to run the greatest country and the biggest economy in the world's history. We cannot afford to abandon our fossil fuels. It will lay off millions and millions of people. It will bankrupt families. I don't see how our middle income people can make it these days with this type of, of prices. They've, he's declared war on agriculture as well. We're seeing that around the world, quite frankly. In Holland, they're getting ready to kill 30% right. of their livestock. And let me tell you something, we're not far behind right. with these, these people in the Biden administration and, and the bureaucracy that he has. The Biden bureaucracy and the appointments that he has made to his cabinet positions have got to be the worst, most incompetent in the history of our great republic. Right. Everything they do. I serve on transportation and infrastructure. And I can tell you, we had Pete Buttigieg. He came to speak with us last week in a, in a, uh, a TNI hearing. And instead of talking about infrastructure and transportation, all he could talk about was racist highways and how uh, he, he, we, we know more about his abortion position than we do about transportation because he doesn't know a thing about transportation. And when you call certain highways racist and you play the race card in transportation and race card in infrastructure, you're digging pretty, pretty deep. Let me tell you something. You are digging really deep to bring racism into transportation and infrastructure. And so until we get a change, and I think we're going to see a change, folks, this coming November in the House and the Senate. But we've unfortunately got 24 plus months of this guy in the White House. We've got to make sure that we have an honest election first, mm -hmm. and we've got to make sure that we get a Republican back in there in the White House that has the courage to do the things that we saw President Trump do. Last time, if that's President Trump, right. we want to see someone to come in there that's got the courage to do the things to put America first, not right. last. And there you go. <laughs> yes. President Trump, in my opinion, best policies, the best. I've never seen a president put America and first let, like President and Trump. And let me tell you. Right. If yeah. you're running for office, the best endorsement to get is President Trump. And I'm telling you, the Democrats, they're not com campaigning with Biden or Kamala Harris. They're like, y'all stay away from us because they're so unpopular. Right. They don't even want him on they the campaign trail. Him. And no, I've been endorsed by President Trump. He called me and gave me his endorsement. Yes. So I appreciate that very much. So, <laughs> but he was right about being woke. You, you brought it up, Mercedes. You were saying, you know, what is your pronoun? I mean, I think that's what we're seeing now, right? We're seeing this kind of radical leftist movement in our schools and on television and at the hearings, and we hear it creeping through our society. And then if you disagree with the radical left, they try to ostracize you, they relegate you to censorship, um, and their friends in the media like Twitter and Facebook and you know, these big social media giants that we all use because it all became a part of our life, right? A global, we're globally connected and we rely on that. And then all of a sudden we realize, well, wait a minute, we're living really in 1984, yeah. in a future where, you know, we have, we have to be awake. We have to know what's going on. And um, all of these pieces need to fit. I mean, we can't just say because President Biden's been the worst president we've ever seen. I mean, he made Jimmy Carter smile. We were talking about that, you know, um, but the worst president that we're going to just win this, that November's going to come and we don't need to do anything, or that 2024 is going to get here and we're going to have a new man in office. That may not necessarily be the case. We can't underestimate what the Democrats are willing and going to try to do and the political machine behind them. And I think that's what makes CPAC so miraculous and important is that, 
here is a place where we can get together, talk out our issues, work together as a team, and fight to win our country back. And that is absolutely what we have to do. And absolutely. Congressman, let me ask you, when it comes to election integrity, this seems to be an issue that keeps popping up. And I know we travel across the country, and it's very basic things like ensuring we have a voter ID in place. And then you have the Democrats and President Biden, where they push for just pretty much anything without protection of the voter. I mean, how do, uh, how do we fight back on what the left is trying to do in terms of fundamentally changing the election system? This is, this is probably the most important thing that we can do to make sure that we have election integrity for this, not, not only for this coming November, but for God's sakes, in two years in 2024. Absolutely has got to happen. These Republican control states that are swing states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, there's a number of them out there, Georgia. Those Republicans sitting in those state legislatures have got to stand tall against any of the pressures that they have had brought to bear. The great COVID excuse, they used COVID to change the election and unconstitutionally change it. I'm one of those bad boys, 147 of us that voted against, uh, uh, you know, the... Uh, like we objected to the electoral count. We, we, we felt like on January the 6th, we wanted investigations. We wanted investigations and we wanted some answers and we still have not had answers. And we want to make sure that they have these investigations and these swing states have got to institute and reform their election process so that they have fair, honest elections that when someone casts a vote, they know that it's going to count, and if someone was, a, if it's a fraudulent vote, it should not count. We saw 2,000 mules, and I keep hearing over and over again <laughs> that that is a debunked movie. Debunked by who? Debunked by the Democrats. We still haven't seen any, any evidence that, that any of that was not true. We had what do they call it, uh, 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 positioning, uh, right. geo positioning with their telephones. They followed them back and forth. They knew. We, we've seen several states, I think uh, Wisconsin was one of them, where they had over 500 drop boxes that were unmanned. I think it was 528 illegal yeah. drop boxes, unmanned, all hours of the night. You, you've seen the movie. Uh, if we don't have an honest election next time, I'll tell you what, the United States of America, if we can't trust our elections, yeah, right. how are we going to have a peaceful transference of power? Can I, can I jump in? You wouldn't want election no, integrity. I know, I know. We all should. It should be a bipartisan issue to have That's election right. integrity right. And, and, and protect legal votes. Okay, Sarah, <laughs> two words. Hunter laptop. Let's add to that. <laughs> Talk about a big problema for <laughs> Joe Biden. Hunter's huge. laptop. What happened there? It should have been there? a huge problema for Joe Biden in 2020. Right. right. It should have been a huge, but it was. But the FBI was too busy. People at high levels covering up and calling it Russian disinformation and allowing that to happen, and that should terrify all of us. And I say this all the time. Look, I love. My husband is here, he's amazing. He's over there with my daughter, a military veteran, almost gave his life on the battlefield in Afghanistan, lost his eyesight there. That's my hero, right? And I say this, I love you. You can stand up, baby, you can stand up. Thank you. It's the most amazing. And, and, and I love my family, and I'm gonna tell you this, I respect the men and women in uniform. I respect our law enforcement officers. I respect our federally armed agents of the law that we entrust to protect our own national security and our nation. And nothing disturbs me more than when I see that our systems have been weaponized for political purposes. I don't care if you don't like President Trump. That does not give you the right to weaponize the FBI and the DOJ Amen. to work against the Constitution of the United States of America that our founding fathers established 
so that we wouldn't have the problems that we see in other countries that operate like banana republics. So we need to get back to that. We need to get back to what our nation stands for. The Department of Justice needs to be gutted. The, the FBI needs to be gutted. And senior officials need to be replaced. And that needs to come from the inside out. And what President Trump said in 2016 is absolutely right. There is a swamp in Washington, D.C. And that bureaucracy has been allowed to grow and fester for too long now. Right. Hunter Biden, that should have been public. There should be an investigation. The Biden family is compromised. There is evidence to show that. They are connected to China, to Ukraine. And even if they're not, shouldn't we know the truth? Yes. They did that to President Trump. And the media covered it up. And you had also the, 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 the right. The, they wouldn't let us even talk about Hunter Biden. They didn't even investigate into the Right. We couldn't Biden. even utter the words Hunter we Biden. We could not because during the election. Everybody was they so sure. They covered it up. Yeah. So when the, when the FBI is telling you, and telling me, you know, oh, you got to stop that. You know, that, don't go any further down that road. And then we find out Christopher Steele's dossier was a bunch of lies, that they were perpetrating lies that were based on Democratic talking points that were perpetuated by Hillary Clinton and her lawyers and the DNC. And it became a huge problem America was embroiled in for over five years. And then we see the truth which of course is Hunter Biden and his laptop, and then they use it and turn against us yeah. and say, no, that's not true, that's disinformation. Uh, if I could just add to that, I can yeah. tell you, I serve on the uh, National Security Task Force, the Republican Conference, and I can tell you one thing you're gonna start seeing when we get the majority back in January, and that is a lot of hearings. Right now, when we're in the minority, we can't, we can't choose a topic for a hearing on a, all our, all our various committees have, have, have hearings on different topics, and uh, we, can't, we can't choose the topic. We can't choose a, a witness for the most part. Uh, we can't get, get a bill to the floor. Right. Uh, we're, we're pretty much just basically having a message. That's all we have. But I can tell you the oversight committees and every single committee that we have in the House of Representatives will be doing oversight hearings of our own and we will be looking in, and we will bring people forward. The FBI doesn't want to do their job, apparently. We've seen that. So we're going to do it for them. Of course, we have to turn the results over to the Department of Justice. Fat chance that they do anything about it. But let us let me just say this. The next president that is a Republican of the United States of America needs to clean house Amen. of the bureaucracy. They absolutely That's do. That's what has to happen. I just, Congressman, I just hope Hunter Biden shows up with clothes on when he goes to the hearing. That's the only thing I ask for. So 30, we all do, Mercedes. 30 seconds to each of you uh, as we've delved into Joe Biden's, I think, big, big problems that he has, and we only got through half of them. Uh, what are your thoughts moving forward and, and your final thoughts on this? My final thoughts are this. I mean, it's going to be, and I, you know, I say this every time on my podcast, um, it's up to the American people. We're in charge, and we have to remember that. It's not about Washington, D.C. We're the boss. We hire them. <laughs> of course, Congressman, and with all due respect, we hire them to do the work for us as constituents. And until we got to get up off the couch, we got to get involved, we've got to get politically active to ensure that they are doing that job. And when they don't, we got to vote them out and yeah. say goodbye. And that is going to make a difference. 2024 cannot come fast enough. And by God, midterms cannot come fast enough. But that requires all of us to do our to do our part and to do our role as Americans is to get out there and vote. And I believe in that wholeheartedly. Thank you. Very Congressman. Good. I didn't think I would ever see the United States of America in this state that we are seeing today. I've served in the uh, U.S. Air Force. I've served in the uh, U.S. Army. My son was a Navy SEAL. My dad was a U.S. Army trooper in the, in the Pacific in, during World War II. And the debacle we saw in Afghanistan, the withdrawal, and the, the ramifications and repercussions of that, I don't think you would have seen a Ukrainian invasion by Russia had we had President Trump in there, believe you me. 
But we have got to have new leadership. The American, you know, I think it was Alexander the Great said, it's not an army of lions led by a sheep that I fear. It's an army of sheep led by a lion. Wow. We've got to get some lions in the leadership positions of this country. We've got to get some honest government. And it's up, we're, we're the, a, a nation by, of, and for the people. The people have got to go to the polls, and they're the ones that have to make this choice. I, keep, I have people come up and say, Congressman, why do you allow this to happen? How, how come you can't stop this? How come you're doing this or not doing that? And I say, elections have consequences. And by gosh, they have consequences, and we're living in right today. And if, every time you go fill your car up, every time you go uh, buy groceries, uh, whenever you see uh, someone uh, having their rights taken away from them, a weaponized uh, D uh, DOJ or FBI, the, the corruption that is going on in this, in this nation is unbelievable. But it can be fixed, and it can be fixed at the ballot box, folks. So we have to do our job, and we have to get a lion to lead this country. I believe right. that. we got to do it. Yeah. All right. We don't have a choice. Well, Lioness and Lion here on stage, let's give a round of applause for Sarah Carter and Congressman Babin. Thank you so much, Thank both you. of you. Thank, Thank you. you. That was so wonderful. Thank you. That was so wonderful. Thank you. Congressman, so very Thank, much. You. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. All right.